So you've unboxed your brand new Mevo Start or Mevo Plus. You're ready to conquer the live streaming world. You want to make your live stream look pro, the best it can possibly be. Today I'm going to walk you through the adjustment settings in the Mevo 2.0 app. To get into the adjustment settings on the Mevo 2.0 app, we need to tap on the lower right hand corner where the three dots show up. When we tap there, then we want to go into where the three circles are in order to reach the adjustment settings. Now, first thing we might notice is that there are some scenes preset for us. Those scenes include normal, custom, stage, backlit, and outdoors. Now, each of those has a different set of maybe exposure or white balance or brightness or contrast preset in it. So it's a quick and easy way to get the color response from what we see with our eyes and what we recognize is, is in our preview to be the same. If I change this from norm I should let you know the picture we're looking at is just simply my iMac monitor has a wide range of color in it, a lot of depth to it. There's some dark darks and some light lights. There's some good oranges and yellows mixed in there. So maybe we'll be able to tell uh, a little bit about what we change when we change one of these settings. I'm going to change from normal to outdoors. Did you see how the oranges brightened up? We'll change that from outdoors to backlit. Backlit tends to try to find those whites and, and, and let them wash out a little bit. You can see each one, each time I choose a different preset, some of these numbers, exposure or ISO or brightness, they change. So the presets are just a, a good starting point for us to catch the right kind of light and give the, the viewer the best representation of what we can actually see with our eyes. I wanted to be able to walk you through some of these adjustment settings. For example, the camera mode. When I tap on camera mode, I have the option of doing auto, shutter, or manual. When I choose shutter, it opens up the ability to change the shutter speed, which lets in more or less light at a time. Each time I change the shutter speed, it's going to adjust the picture accordingly. We'll change that over to manual, which then brings in our ISO option. Once again, allowing more or less light into the lens and changing our picture. It can also have a, a direct impact on how crisp our picture looks, especially when there's movement. We'll put that back to auto because that's where we started. When I move over to exposure and tap on that one, it can go negative and that will dim things a little bit. We can go positive and that will almost brighten things up just a little bit. We'll put it back to zero where we started. Shutter and ISO are only accessible when we choose the correct camera mode. When I get into white balance, here's another set of presets. It starts out on auto. That's the default in the Mevo 2.0 app. But when I tap on white balance, I see that there are some preset choices depending on the lighting that I have. Now, we go to tungsten there, and we see that everything kind of has a blue hue to it. So if you are filming in a place where there is a tungsten light source, that's valuable to you. If you're in, a, in an office or, a, or a, an institution where there is fluorescent lighting, Choosing that fluorescent might be a good choice for you. Daylight is oftentimes a very accurate representation of good uh, quality light. Whenever I look at the computer screen that the Mevo is pointed at and I look at what is being previewed here uh, for the live stream 
or for the recording, I'm getting a very close representation. My yellows are a little bit dimmer. My oranges are spot on. My grays look really good. My blues are a little bit uh, a little bit less than, but this is really close to what I'm seeing on the computer screen. And then we can move into cloudy, which is a, a good outdoor, and that's that's actually a very very close representation to uh, to what we what I see on the computer screen as I'm looking at this. So white balance is just one of those things you check each one, test and see which one gives you the best option, depending on the circumstances you are recording or streaming from. Brightness, of course displays colors as shades darker or lighter so when we make the change for those settings we see an obvious difference just going a little bit this way or a little bit that way uh, makes a, a drastic change contrast low contrast always looks flat but high contrast looks more lively in regard to clarity so uh, mo moving over and changing that contrast is something that can be done if we want to uh, bring the darkers bring the dark colors darker and the light colors lighter or we can we can uh, we can go the other direction and we get very little difference I didn't mean to make it all the way to zero zero but you can see that that's a much flatter picture there I don't remember what contrast was on it was probably on 1.1 so we'll put it there that's a pretty close representation to what we're seeing saturation then involves the depth or the intensity of the color uh, more saturation is vibrant less saturation is muted so to pull this a couple of tenths one way or the other is going to change oftentimes recognize it as reds being brighter or or more red in a uh, in a picture if i if i run the saturation number up our sharpness gives a, a, a how much control the edges of the pixel have uh, higher sharpness is going to have a, a higher edge to those pictures pixels a lower sharpness is going to be a little fuzzier uh, at the edge of those pixels and medium is a good place to stay if you are uh, if you're just streaming or recording uh, that's that's generally where uh, where we're going to find ourselves staying in sharpness is, is medium unless you have a incredibly intense light uh, that, that you are able to pour on there and you may get to change that setting a little bit our view angle is basically a preset crop uh, but it also has to do with the shape of your lens so for example when we move over to view angle and we choose we, we started with flat now that's not the default the default is normal in the Mevo 2.0 app but uh, flat is the is the truest picture of a, of a scene like this so when I choose flat and I change that from flat to narrow we're gonna see it zoom out just a little bit we have more picture of the mountain now we have uh, uh, the width of my uh, desktop there uh, we're seeing more of the picture on narrow than we were on flat flat is is that that preset that is basically zoomed in as far as it can when I move from narrow to normal we're seeing it zoomed out a little bit more so now we're beginning to see the edges of the iMac we can see that in order to get this much width and height with this lens we'll begin to see the vertical lines and the horizontal lines curve a little bit they begin to bow it's because we're, we're letting the 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 picture uh, catch more of a concave lens so normal has a bow uh, uh, around the vertical and horizontal spaces as we move past normal to wide the bow is more pronounced we get more of a picture if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to zoom in to certain uh, uh, certain subjects in my recording then using a wide angle is valuable you don't notice near so much of the bow if I'm just going from shot to shot to from one uh, one subject to another I can move it around and still have a good quality picture just if I zoom all the way out it becomes obvious let me get back into the adjustment settings there's also a fish eye that is just the full bubble of that lens I don't know that I've ever used that in uh, in recording or streaming next we get to metering the metering setting here measures the brightness of the subject 
whenever I change the metering, I can meter it so that it judges the brightness of the crop where I crop in, and so then adjusts the brightness. Or I can let the meter pick up on the entire screen, the wide, if I were zoomed all the way out. So it metering determines where on the screen it's going to judge how bright the, uh, the picture should be. There is the option to flip. If I were not streaming, if I were not recording right now, I would have the option to flip, which is just a 180 degree uh, rotation of the picture. So that if you wanted to mount your camera upside down, it, it would still uh, present as the picture that you're looking for. There's also the option to choose electronic image stabilization. Uh, but that has to be done before you start recording or streaming and of course that that just keeps any any jitters from showing up quite so bad uh, anybody that's ever used electronic image stabilization knows that it's going to uh, it's going to lower your resolution just a little bit because it's going to take those edges top bottom left and right and use those as space it can use as shock absorbers or buffers there is the anti-flicker that allows different Hertz settings so if you are in a uh, if you're in a fluorescent lit room or if you're shooting a television screen then anti flicker can be a, a valuable tool for you and the final one in this set set of settings is the exposure metering so when you're in shot especially if you have a person as your subject and their skin tone is different from the background or the foreground or even their own shirt exposure metering can can help you keep their skin tone looking natural you can choose it to be the center the center of the shot so if you're zoomed in exposure metering here is going to find the the uh, the hillside there that's being zoomed in on and it will use that to judge how much exposure to use uh, you can choose average it's going to look across the entirety of that shot and it will, it will use that to, to determine the exposure. Or it can be spot, which is going to find that center. I don't know how big the center is, but it's going to find that center. And it will, it will change the exposure accordingly. Now, the, the couple of other settings that we have not covered are the presets for filters. So let me zoom back out here and show you that we have a few choices for presets for filters. We have a high contrast. When I choose the high contrast, you'll notice that it did literally change the contrast up. It also changed the saturation up. But we could also go the other direction and we could choose flat as a preset. It reduced the contrast. It reduced the saturation. It reduced the exposure so this is another preset the black and white setting if you want to go a little old school and have that kind of uh, of, of recording or stream then that's available to you if you want to go vivid vivid is, vivid is going to uh is going to change and and bring out the color uh, bring out those reds it's it's gonna gonna it's gonna pop on your screen and then you have the sepia or sepia that is uh, is the uh, old west as what I always think of whenever I see that uh, that filter being used on so as you can see the adjustment settings give you a lot of flexibility in fine-tuning your recording or your stream if these videos have been helpful to you don't forget to like or subscribe check out my other videos on how the Mevo works and some of the accessories that go with it hope you have a great day